The International Conference on the Buddhist Path to Sustainable Development Goals is an effort to give an alternative look at the way to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. Organized by the National Office of Buddhism and the World Buddhist University of the WFB as a tribute to the late King Pumipon Adunyadid, who was born on December 5, 1927, and the late Supreme Patriarch Somdet Prayang Nasangbon the founding inspiration of the National Office of Buddhism and the World Buddhist University. How can we adapt to a world that's always on the move? The world never stops developing. The question lies, what kind of development we care for? Is development really a development? There are growing fears that current levels of economic development are not sustainable. As the composition of the world population changes, policymakers have turned their attention away from economic development to sustainable economic development. These days, our development is geared by the GDP. On a sad note, with GDP development also brings in decadence. We see many who are economically sound are not always happy. Economic development does not guarantee happiness. Therefore, we have been searching for a perfect developing model which keeps a holistic vision of human development, a balance between material and mental development. The development which guarantees GDP as well as GNH, which seems as an impossible mission. In September 2015, the United Nations achieved international agreement for its 2030 Agenda on Sustainable Development. The agenda identifies 17 goals and 169 targets to address a number of economic, environmental, and social concerns facing the world today. The 17 global goals that cover five key themes. People, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership. Of course, agendas are mere words on paper unless they can be implemented. To do that, capacities need to be built, governance need to be improved, citizens need to be engaged, and while money isn't everything, financing is required too. Most importantly, what is the role of spirituality and religions towards the sustainable development goals? Many see the sphere of religions and development are two different entities. On the contrary, the wise may use spiritual and religious roles to expedite the achievement of the sustainable development goals. Of course, the global goals would be easier to achieve with the full engagement with religions. Religions do complement the sustainable development goals not only to achieve material success, but overall happiness too. While the world is in the spree of the SDGs, the late king Pumipon Adunyadeh, owner of the United Nations First Human Development Lifetime Achievement Award as the world's development king, presented his own blueprint of the Sustainable Development Goals with his Innovation Principle of the Sufficiency Economy Philosophy, or SEP. In this regard, Madam Irina Bukova, former Director General of UNESCO, once addressed, the late king put into practice a vision that gives us the keys to achieving the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And in this spirit, I wish to thank the permanent delegation of Thailand to UNESCO and the World Fellowship of Buddhists for organizing this very timely event. His Majesty's far-sighted philosophy of sufficiency economy and its contribution to economic and social change today, not only in Thailand, but globally. His Majesty marked the history of the 20th century, but this vision, and I would say wisdom, will mark the 21st century as well. He advocated a holistic vision of human development to empower the most disadvantaged, to achieve greater social equity by challenging classic growth patterns. This philosophy guidance resonates deeply with the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development 
adopted by the United Nations in 2015, which sets an ambitious and bold blueprint to advance human dignity and to protect our planet. The late king's SCP is no other than the secularized version of the Buddhist's threefold training. Sufficiency is a secular form of ethical discipline, the ability to refrain from destructive behavior. The way for us to develop this is to engage in constructive behavior. Economy from an etymological perspective means management of household life. The late king's economy in Thai resembles English etymology, that is, excellent management or setakit. Buddhism points at mind management as an excellent management. Philosophy again is a layman term for wisdom or discriminating awareness. The ability to discriminate or differentiate between what's to be adopted and what's to be discarded. The sense of full of rationality. Accordingly, sufficiency stands for life of moderation, not too much and not too little, the sila. Economy stands for excellence action, that is, mindfulness practice in every field of our life, semati. Philosophy stands for penetration or mental acuteness to our mindset of the world, panya. The secular SCP or the Buddhist threefold training leads to the noble eightfold path in action. Through SCP, it triggers eight directions of holistic human development. Speech, strategy, sustenance, effort, exactness, engrossment, penetration, and perception. Generally speaking, sustainable development easily can understand as an oxymoron. It is a contradiction in terms. Therefore, the modern mantra of sustainable development needs a deeper scrutiny. Etymologically, sustain means holding all activities with firm foundation from below. Fundamentally, sustainable development is any development which has a balance as its foundation and has no negative byproduct on society, economy, and environments, as we have been facing with most developments. In this regard, Buddhism can be seen as the path to achieve the very sustainable development as its ultimate goal. To be precise, etymologically, the Latin root of sustain, that is, tene and sansikit root of dharma, that is, dre, are in fact the same root and have same meaning, that is, to uphold. When dharma means sustaining, then we can say that the Buddha's dharma means the Buddha's teaching on sustainability. In other words, Buddhism is all about guidance on sustainable development. Accordingly, the Buddha's first sermon, Tamma Jaka Pawatana, literally can be translated as the application of sustainable development in action. This directly indicates that Buddhist principles are a direct guideline to achieve sustainable development in action. <laughs>